understand this better with our demand and supply curves. We'll start by constructing a typical demand and supply graph. Then we draw in a demand curve DD and a supply curve SS. Where these two curves cross is the equilibrium price in quantity, where everything that's made is bought. In other words, the forces of supply and demand have determined the local market price, and that's the price at which the local market clears. Everything that's produced is consumed. Now we'll add the outside world to this picture. We're a developing nation and haven't achieved optimal efficiency yet, so our price for this product is higher than the price in the rest of the world. And we show the international market price on the diagram by drawing the horizontal curve PW. This curve is horizontal or constant because the price is set on the world market and the actions of local buyers and sellers have no effect on it. So now, some people can import this cheaper good and sell it on to us, the consumers. Remember, we're saying these products are the same in every way. The only difference is the price. So which will you buy? The more expensive made in South Africa product or the same but cheaper imported product? Most consumers have a limited income to spend, so the price they pay for a product will be a crucial consideration. Look at our diagram now that imports have entered the market. The amount of the good produced locally is much lower than before, where the PW curve cuts the local supply curve. Now why is this? Well, as we know from the law of supply, the lower the price, the lower the quantity supplied. Some local suppliers will reduce production or close down completely because they simply cannot cover their higher, less efficient costs of production. But at this lower world price, consumers want more of the product. The quantity demanded is shown where the demand curve intersects the price, PW. You can see on the graph that the amount supplied locally and the quantity demanded by local consumers are not the same. Consumers want much more than the local producers can supply at price PW. So where do you think the rest of the supply comes from? Yes, it comes from imports. So here we see an example of international trade and how comparative advantage ensures that the most efficient producers make those goods and services. But government has a problem because the relatively inefficient local producers are going out of business, people are losing their jobs and this creates social and economic strain. Government may introduce new trade policy in an effort to protect local producers and the jobs they provide. It can impose a tariff on the imported products to make them more expensive for our consumer and therefore less dominant in our local market. We show it as a horizontal curve, PT, which is the new higher price above PW. So what's happened? The consumers now have to pay a higher price for the product. Have a look at where the curve PT intersects the demand curve. Consumers are obviously buying less of the product than they did at the lower world price. And how will the tariff affect the producers? Well, local suppliers can now get a higher price than the world price for their products. So some local producers re-enter the market, generating some more employment. At this slightly higher tariff price, the amount supplied by local producers is still not enough to completely satisfy local demand, so there's still room in the market for some imports. And on these imports, the government will receive revenue, an amount equal to the number of units imported times the tariff. So, to sum up, a tariff will benefit the producers, there'll be some jobs created and government will receive more revenue. However, the people who will be paying for this are the consumers, they end up paying more than the normal price.